I do love the DIY community a lot. This uh, will be my 40th birthday at the end of the year. No, you're kidding. My family didn't accept it. Um, they didn't really talk about it. Um, mm -hmm. My father actually is gay and he is married to a man. Well, good morning, Chris, or good evening for you. Yes, good morning to you and good evening. Thanks for, for jumping on the call. Me. Yes, absolutely. We just wanted to have this call with you to get to know you a little bit better because, you know, we've been watching your videos, our followers have been watching your videos, and everyone loves your videos. They always comment about how much they love you and how much they love your eyes, or that might just be me. <laughs> But we just wanted to get you to know you a little bit better. So can you just give us a quick introduction? Who is Chris? What do you do? What do you like doing? Yeah, I would love to. Um, so I am Chris and I am from the United States of America. So I'm here in the USA. I was born in New York. I've kind of hopped around different states within the country. Just kind of, I guess, get a feel for where I wanted to end up. Um, I ended up in Richmond, Virginia. And I've been a hairstylist, um, and that's been my main passion um, for the last about 15 years. 15 yeah, years? Yeah, I will be, this uh, will be my 40th birthday at the end of the year. No, you're kidding. That's dead serious. No, right. I, I guess, I honestly guess like 31. I was like, oh, 31, <laughs> maybe 32 if I'm on the wrong. Well, it's a little unbelievable. People are usually pretty shocked by that. Um, mm -hmm. But, I mean, I do a lot to my face. I mean, clearly you know that um, from my videos, but um, I think the proof is in the pudding. And what aspect in particular is like drawing you into the whole hair stunning business? Is it, what is it? I yeah. think it's like to make people feel good about themselves. Like I, I have a direct impact on somebody every day. Hopefully it's a good impact. Maybe some people, it might not be, but you know, we, we, I'm a people pleaser by nature, but you're not gonna please everybody. And it's just kind of knowing that, but, but yeah, I, I get to have a direct impact on people every day and I really do like that. And from a selfish standpoint, you get so much positive feedback and compliment every single day. So from a selfish standpoint, I mean, who doesn't like to hear positive things every day, right? So there's that as well. While we were planning for this video call to get to know you, you actually suggested this really good idea of making a donation to the charity Outright International. Can you tell us a little bit more about why that is important to you? So I was doing a little research on my own actually on Outright International. Um, there's, don't get me wrong, there's tons and tons of organizations that are beneficial to, to helping. Um, anyone in a lot of countries or their local area. Uh, but I chose Outright International because they actually have a national presence in the United Nations. They have a lot of people that are working to fight uh, for basic human rights for people in the LGBT community for inclusiveness all around the globe. And they're one of the only organizations um, that's here based in the U.S., but their, their funds far exceed the U.S. alone. And the fact that they have a presence in the United Nations is unheard of. And why does that matter to you, that they have such an international presence? Because that means that they'll be able to help more people and they have a lot more power and they have a lot more connections that I feel like they would be able to get a lot more things accomplished than a smaller organization or someone that doesn't have a presence in the United Nations alone. Going through high school, like I was never really bullied or picked on in high school. Um, I wasn't even out in high school. I did my coming out story. I never came out until I think I was like 19. So I had graduated high school, moved away, uh, moved to a whole other state, moved back to Maryland, and I had finally decided that I was going to come out. Uh, but it was just a struggle because I, my family didn't accept it. Um, they didn't really talk about it. Um, my father actually is gay, and he is married to a man. Um, but even he would never talk about it. So I didn't really have anyone to talk to, and I, and I grew up in a very small country, middle of nowhere town where there weren't really a lot of gay people. Um, so I didn't really have anyone close to me that I could talk to or, or anything. So a lot of that did cause me to, you know, be sad, get depressed. I would drink a lot. I would do drugs. And it's just like, what do you do? You know, you just kind of self-medicate and then you just kind of, it just gets out of control until one day you decide enough's enough and it's not worth it anymore. And then someone comes along and they tell you that it's okay. And I'm it is okay, and now it, and now it is okay, and now this is many, many eons ago. Um, so I've always been in a much, much better place. Once I had taken myself out of my living situation, 
um, and just surrounded myself with other people, everything did get better. And I've never, never had any concerns or depression or anything like that again, because I finally was able to accept myself, so. I'm really glad to hear that. For people that are currently in the same situation that you have been in, what would be the advice that you could give to let them know that it's gonna be okay, they can find that internal peace? My advice would be to, you know, get in touch with a support group, call somebody, talk to somebody. You know, when I was at that a teenager at that age or just coming out of my teen years, we didn't have a lot of that. There weren't organizations, there weren't hotlines to call people to talk to. But so much of that has changed. So there's more there's more avenues and ways that people can actually get in touch with people that can actually help and talk to them. But if nobody talks to anybody, nobody's going to know and no one's going to be able to help you. So my advice would be to call somebody, talk to somebody, anybody. Uh, but more importantly, try to find someone that's, you know, in the in the same community as you, um, the LGBT community, so that way they can actually relate to you and give you much, much better advice because in the end it will be okay. Nothing, nothing lasts forever. That's lovely. Thank you so much for bringing this up to us in the first place and for embarking on this project with us. We're so excited to be doing this with yes, you. Yes, and I'm really appreciative that you guys wanted to do this with me. So I appreciate that and thank you. Of course, we're happy to support. So from there on, from the hairstyling, how did you kind of roll into what you're doing right now? I actually started, um, I started getting Botox when I was 25 years old. 25? Uh -huh. That's quite young. That's my, that was my very first appointment. Well, because I was already obsessed with skincare and anti-aging. I was like, uh, we're going to stop this in its tracks now. I'm not going to get older. Where, where did, did you just start with the, the Glabella? I, I started with my Glabella complex and we just did through here and here. Um, my eyes, I had only started treating the past maybe two years. I haven't really had to do much to that, fortunately. But by 25, I was starting to do Botox. Um, I started getting into lip fillers. So I would get filler at least once a year. About two years ago, um, I started finding different people on YouTube that were doing a lot of these things themselves. So from that point, it took a big old turn because I was like, whoa, I can, I can learn how to do this myself. And that's when I, about a year and a half to two years ago, I, start, I took the plunge in and I started to learn and do research and just started doing my own face because, I mean, here in America, Botox, depending on your location, can be, for me, I was spending about five to six hundred something dollars every three months. Every yeah. three months, since you were 25. Uh huh. Since I was 25. And then some places are even more expensive than that now. So yeah. I'm like, the fact that I can do my own face for a hundred dollars mm -hmm. versus six hundred dollars is it's totally, a huge totally a huge difference. So, I mean, that, that was the biggest appeal. But then also I get a sense of gratification because I know that I know what I'm doing now and I know my face better than some person seeing me every three months is gonna see me. So I can kind of adjust and tweak things the way that I want it. And I think there's a little artistic um, creative outlet to that as well. So I do like that. How do you ensure that all of your procedures are safe? That you do not injure yourself, that you do not cause any vascular occlusion like you've been talking about? No drooping eyebrows. What do you do to ensure that everything is safe? So I, I mean, honestly, nothing is 100%. And I think anyone that is going into this, they just have to know that nothing is 100%. And there are, it, there's always going to be a risk associated with it. Um, I mean, I haven't had anything bad happen so far. Um, that's not to say nothing bad could ever happen. But I mean, just kind of, like I said, when I'm doing my toxin and things like that, knowing where I shouldn't inject, knowing the depth of things that, you know, typically you you read about or hear other, you know, doctors say, like how shallow something is or how deep an injection is. Um, when you're dealing with, I mean, fillers, I don't really do a whole lot of fillers, but I mean, that's why I don't do those because there is such a risk for the vascular occlusions. But my lips, I feel pretty comfortable doing since I'm not doing a whole lot. Um, mm -hmm. and just knowing, you know, your wet, wet to dry border that you're not supposed to inject near. Um, and then with mesotherapy, I mean, you're, you're not using something that's cross-linked. So for me, I feel super, super safe doing skin boosting treatments with needles because it's not anything that's going to cause a vascular occlusion. Um, so I never have any kind of hesitancy to that. But you mentioned that you actually started getting into like doing all of the needle poking to yourself because mm -hmm. you watch some other people doing it online. 
um, yeah. part of the DIY community. Can you just tell us a little bit more about this DIY community? What kind of people is it? What kind of atmospheres are going around? Uh, anything you want to share with us about that? Um, yeah, so the DIY community, I feel like, is not it's not very big. It is a smaller, more niche community. Um, and even on YouTube, I would say that the, the DIY, I don't want to say influencers, I guess we could say, um, there's not a ton of them. So everyone's just like searching for the same things and finding these small select groups of people that are almost kind of focusing on one particular thing, like someone does a lot of you know, microneedling, or some people do a lot more thread, and some people do a lot more skin boosters, and some people do like mostly like fat dissolving. So it seems like a lot of these influencers in the DIY community are kind of focusing on just one, I guess, type of treatment mostly. Um, that's where I, I personally like to do lots of different things because I just, I just like to do it all. Um, but it is a, it's a small community, but I think everyone like collectively wants to, I don't want to say help people or teach people how to do it because you know, you can't really teach someone how to do something. Um, but I think collectively as a DOI community, people just want to make sure people are being safe and doing things to the best of their ability. Um, so no one's harming themselves. So I feel like that's a nice thing about the community, but as with anything, there there's always going to be cattiness. There's always going to be some type of a competition, and someone's you know trying to get to the top of that ladder, be better than this person. But that's really in anything. But I do love the DIY community a lot. So, what do you feel like is kind of like missing in the DIY community? What would you like to see, or what kind of changes do you think would be very beneficial to this community? I would love for there to be a, just in general a safer platform for people to share all their information that is not overly censored because uh, there's a lot of censorship that you can't talk about things, show certain things, and most of the problems would arise from people not having all the information available to them that could potentially be beneficial. So I would like to see a, some kind of a safer platform for people to share their knowledge and their information. Thank you so much for jumping on the call today, Chris. It was so nice to get to know more about you. And I just feel like I've learned so much about you in the hour and a half that we've been I talking. Know, right? to well, the time it's, flies. It's time flies. fun. And I, it, I, it was such a pleasure. And I'm so glad I was able to, for, to help you guys get to know me a lot better um, and just share some things about myself. So thank you. Yes. So thank you. No, our pleasure. We're so excited to see something, some more videos from you. We're excited to see what's coming in the future for you as well. And we're just very thankful for today as well. Thank you. I look forward to it. Thank you. Have a nice night. Thank you too. Bye. If you want to know more about our Pride Month campaign, go to our social media to learn more. If you have any questions for Chris, let us know in the comments and we'll be happy to answer them as well. Don't forget to like, turn on notifications and hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.